Alright, today we're going to be assembling Toodle's Chimp Kit. Before we get started, we're going to check and make sure that we have everything that we need. Opening up the bag, we're just going to slide everything out. Inside, you should find Toodle's Welcome Guide. This is very important, be sure to keep it, because you may need it later. And here we have the printed circuit board. We're going to have a few other parts, and we're going to make sure that we go over all of them. Okay, for starters, we've got the printed circuit board right here. Very important, very obvious if it's missing, but I have mine. Alright, next up we have a 14 pin integrated circuit. It's the smaller of the two. It has a purple rubber band around it. And then next up we've got a 28 pin integrated circuit. These are both very important. Next up, two capacitors, different sizes, different ratings. These are the aluminum capacitors. There is one other capacitor. Alright, now we have a 20 megahertz resonator. It is different that it has three pins. Alright, and now two 10 pin resistor networks. These aren't the last, I just dropped a piece. I'll show you in a second. And finally, one other small capacitor. I had dropped this. Um, it's small, it should be yellow or blue, two pins at the end. Alright, now let's get into some basic equipment you'll be needing. Firstly, and foremostly, you'll need solder, of course, because this is a soldering project. Then you're going to need some wire cutters or diagonal nose pliers, same thing. Then you're going to need a soldering iron with a stand. A desoldering pump is nice. This just sucks away hot solder in case if you've made a mistake on the board. You can just press a couple buttons and it'll suck away any hot solder so you can take it right off. Alternatively, you could have some copper braided desoldering wire. However, if you're going to use this, you're also going to need some needle nose pliers to hold them by. This gets very hot whenever you use it. This is because you're going to press copper and heat next to each other. And remember, copper is a really good conductor. So all that heat that you're just going to press on it, well, it's going to go up the copper wire and probably burn you. So just be sure to use pliers. Alright, I'm going to take this minute to just explain why you would rather have the kit instead of just buying it pre-assembled. One reason is, it will save you 15 bucks. Another reason is, there is no way to get the full dual system mod without at least a little bit of soldering. Now while guides have come up with the most solderless solutions, you're still going to have to solder a little bit. So you might as well get some soldering experience assembling the kit itself. Another reason is, I don't like screw terminals on my printed circuit boards, so the only way to get it without is to buy the kit. So now we're going to actually go over some basic soldering techniques, since I know a lot of you have no experience on this whatsoever, which is perfectly cool. This is a freeze frame of the general technique of soldering. You want the metal tip of the soldering iron to touch the solder. When these two meet, the solder will melt. Solder is a lot like electrical hot glue. Whenever it melts, it will melt into sort of a glue-like consistency, allowing you to stick pieces together. Now what this means on a circuit board is that you'll be able to stick individual components to a circuit board. I'll show you like so. If the heat were on and I were to touch these two together, the solder would immediately melt, and whatever pin I was sticking it over would now be bonded completely to the circuit board. Here's what the circuit board looks like from the bottom. 
If you notice, between the metal terminals there are some very, very tiny holes. These holes are where we like to thread things through and then apply solder to the back of them. Once you've done this, it'll be glued essentially to the back of the board. Properly glue all of the components and the circuit will be complete. Alright, now I've got my soldering iron heating up, and you can see a little bit of smoke coming from it. I intentionally used one for the first time to demonstrate that this is normal whenever you heat up a soldering iron for the first time. And we're smoking, and we're heating, and we're smoking, and I think we're about ready now. Alright, I'm starting out things by doing something that most people should, and that's taking out these integrated circuit sockets. These are really beneficial to anyone who's new to soldering, but I just don't like them. It's personal preference. Um, really, I recommend that you keep them on. Don't be like me and be crazy and take them off. Alright, now that I've barbarically ripped those off, um, we're actually going to start putting it together. First on our list, we're going to look at the aluminum capacitors. Now, I'm holding it up just to show you that there is a lighter and darker side. This is important because the lighter side is negative and the darker side is positive. The negative side will also be marked as well as having the shorter lead. Though you can't really see it close up from my camera, the circuit board has three places to put three capacitors. To place a capacitor, make sure that the positive is going through the hole that is marked with the plus sign. Thread them through and then push it in. It is also important to make sure each capacitor goes through the right spot. The slightly larger 10 microfarad aluminum capacitor will go through C3. This is the one I'm currently working on. With a hot iron and solder in hand, you're ready to attempt your first soldering connection. Simply touch the two together to try to get it to melt and go into place, like so. Now you notice there's a little bit of smoke coming off. This is perfectly normal and meaning that you're doing it correctly. There is a core built into solder that's designed to burn off instead of using the old school flux. Keep your solder nice and clean whenever you apply it to the bore. So don't worry about any smoke. You're not burning anything. Or rather, anything that wasn't meant to be burned in the first place. Oh, and in that first clip, I forgot to actually trim the solder off of the roll, which was a blatant mistake on my part. I just prefer it off so I can work with it easily in my hands. Now I'm going to go slowly for this one. Alright. I'm bringing them both together, and here I touch them, the solder is about to melt, there it goes, and I've fused them together. There's also another way to solder, so that you can use your extra hand. Simply bring the solder and the soldering iron together. Now that the solder is melted on the tip, you can try to make a connection. However, it's easy to use too much solder and create the mistake I've just done. I created a solder bridge. This is when solder kind of melts over from one hole to the other. You don't want this. Since electricity flows through the path of least resistance, it's going to flow straight through the solder and never go through the capacitor you were trying to solder on. To fix this, you just need to take off a little bit of solder. This is a great use time for the desoldering pump. All you need to do 
is heat up the solder you're trying to remove and then press the button on the side to try to take it away. I did this out of frame by accident, but now you can see that there's not as much solder on there anymore. Another way to do this is to take the soldering iron and drag it straight between the two things you're trying to unbridge. This too, I accidentally did out of frame. Now that we've removed the excess solder, I'll show you what a good connection looks like. You'll be able to pull it, but not it won't be able to move at all. This is a good sign. 